We are a chosen generation of spirit-filled believers called out by God. We are called to minister deliverance to the captive, healing to the sick, and salvation to the lost. We are building godly character through committed people. We are reaching Abernat and beyond. How far beyond? Way beyond.
Bishop in his absence, he's here in spirit though, amen. Y'all continue to lift him up. Y'all to first lady in the house. Whoop, whoop, yay! <laughs> amen, amen. I know y'all like she part of call out ministry. She called everybody out. But y'all, it's all in love, amen. Did y'all hear the kids wade in the water? Wade in the water, you know, sometimes you have to go back, right? Cam, y'all, I heard y'all. Yes, I did. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> y'all, God is good. So while I'm doing my studying and everything, and I'm like, Lord, you know, when, when we were little, like me and Kanisha generation, we was little. And, you know, our parents, the older people, not saying y'all old, I'm just saying, hey, y'all used to say, hey, y'all know y'all the church of tomorrow, Right? So I couldn't understand what that meant until I became the age I was. And now I feel like I can tell to you, y'all the church of tomorrow. Hello? Y'all are the church of tomorrow. So I'm grateful that God placed it on Bishop mind and his heart to cover y'all every day. Amen? He, thank you. That he covers the children. Amen? Because, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't want the church of tomorrow to come to pass, y'all. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Every time I turn on the news, I'm hearing something about a teenager, a kid being killed, y'all. Jesus, amen? All this killing and all this type of stuff, y'all should be grateful that y'all have a church that pray for y'all, amen? Amen. So I'm sitting here, and I was doing my study, and then all these different songs, because, you know, sometimes you have to go back, amen? It's nothing wrong with the upbeat songs today, but sometimes you have to go back. So I was doing my studying, and then I ain't going to sing the song, but I'm going to tell y'all what the lyrics is. Amen. So I was listening. It said, fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Have you ever been thirsty? Yeah. Have you ever been in a drought? Y'all, my God, my God, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Have you ever had a want? <laughs> Have you ever had a want? Then it says, fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Amen. Then I was listening to some other songs, and it said, I need thee. I don't know about you, but I need God. Amen. I need him every day. Y'all, if I cry, it's because I think back. If I cry, I think back on what God has done. Amen. It says that I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. 
hour. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Amen. Have you ever needed them? Um, have you ever had a need, church? Okay, then I heard this song, Pass Me Not. <laughs> oh, gentle Savior. Y'all, don't y'all know he's gentle? Amen. Y'all, he's gentle. Hear my humble cry. Don't y'all want to be heard? Amen. While on others that are calling, do not. <laughs> do not pass me by. Amen. Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others that are calling, do not pass me by. Somebody say, Lord, don't pass me by. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And then I'm going to pick up my mama because I love her. You know you my boo. Because my mama, the song, a charge to keep. What did you say? You thought it said Charles. Amen. But a charge to keep. Y'all, I couldn't understand when I was a little girl and the deacons were saying these songs. And I'm like, what? Oh, my God. I wish they'll play Kirk Franklin. Can these deacons not learn Kirk? Learn all these different songs. But when I tell you, them people knew what them songs meant. Amen. So it says, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all, my powers engaged to do my master's will. Anybody want to do his will? Woo! Anybody want to do his will in the house? Woo, Lord, yes, that's a clap, amen. Do his will in the house. Woo! And then it's a blessed assurance. <laughs> blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Is he yours? Is he yours, church? Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Hallelujah, washed in his blood. This is my story. <laughs> this is my song. It's personal, amen. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Is it yours? Amen. This is my song. Is it yours? Praising my Savior all the day long. Children, if y'all don't know these songs, y'all need to learn them. Because I'm going to be honest. When I was y'all age, I was like, anybody got time for them old songs? Y'all, yes, I do. I do today. Amen. I do today. My God, my God. All to him I owe because he's so great. You know, somebody laid down last night and didn't get up. But we here. <laughs> Anything dead need to be buried and look like all of y'all is alive. Amen. Praise God. He's good. He's so good, y'all. He's so good. Like, who wouldn't serve a God like this? There's no God like Jehovah. Amen. He's so good, y'all. And I'm trying to get in my message, but I'm in it. I'm in it. God is so good. Like, if you don't get nothing from what I say today, know that God is good. Amen. Nobody will treat you better. <laughs> Nobody will treat you better. Y'all. <laughs> Nobody will treat you better. Okay. I know without a doubt that my mom and my daddy love me. I know my husband. Hey, boo. I know he loved me. Amen. I know my kids love me. I know y'all love me. But y'all can't love me <laughs> more than God. Y'all can't even do for me more than God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Lord have mercy. God, you're so good. Oh, y'all. You know, you talk about Campbell soup. Mm -mm -mm. Lord, God is good. Y'all, I pass English. Okay. Good ain't a word, but it's going to work today. He's gooder than that. Amen. He's gooder than that. All right. If you have your Bible, your phone, or whatever. Turn to the to John chapter 11. Okay. Whew. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Because when I think of the goodness, <laughs> when I think where he brought me from, my God, when I think of what he's done, y'all, steps ordered in the Lord. Steps ordered in the Lord. Traveling grace where I go, my God, he keep me safe. You hear about people getting killed in car accidents, but God, y'all, he's a keeper, amen? He's a keeper. He's a keeper, my God, my God. He's a keeper. Woo, John chapter 11. All right, I guess I should have gave y'all a title. <laughs> Grave clothes be loosed. That's what we're going to talk about today. Grave clothes be loosed. And I'm going to read chapter 11 of John to you. And it's a few, few chapters, so y'all just bear with me and follow, okay? It says, now a certain man was sick 
named Lazarus of Bethany, the, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Okay, so it said he was, he was sick, right? That's past tense, right? That means something happened, he was sick. So it says, it was the Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet. Y'all, Mary watched his Lord Jesus. She wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Okay, it says in verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. All right? So they knew that Jesus loved them, right? All right, so it says, <laughs> Woo, Lord Jesus, the one that you love is sick. And I like how they stated, Lord, you know, you know the one, because they you know us. You know the one that's sick, right? All right, they had no doubt because they knew that Jesus loved them, and they knew that Jesus loved their brother. So when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So it says, when he had heard, y'all, Jesus got the message. It says, when Jesus, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode. Y'all say, stay put. All right. He abode, okay? Two days, still in the same place where he was. Two days, y'all. How many know that Jesus' time is always perfect? And we like, Lord, will you hurry up? What is taking you so long? Will you hurry up, Lord? Have y'all ever been in a moment like that? I know I have. Like, Lord, you're moving too slow. Literally, y'all. But his time is perfect. And then when he show up, it's like, oh, no, Lord, thank you. Anybody got a thankful heart in the house today? When you think about God's timing versus yours, amen, to God be the glory, y'all. His, his timing is always perfect, okay? You ain't got to rush him. He coming. <laughs> All right. Verse 7 says, Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Yeah, you going to go back? All right, y'all. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not. Because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled because there is no light in him. All right. Um, I was talking to one of my coworkers, and she said something about roaches. Right. So I was like, why are we sitting up here talking about roaches? Like, what's really going on? So she said, think about it. You know, like, if you ever been somewhere and there were roaches, and you turn, the light is off, but when you turn the light on, the roaches scatter. This how, like, when we walk in, y'all, and you see people scattering, we should be witnessing to them roaches. I ain't caught, Lord, forgive me for calling the people roaches. <laughs> we should be running to them like, hey, uh-uh, you ain't got to run. Let me tell you about somebody that's changed my life, amen? He can do the same for you. Praise God, amen? He's able. So then we go to verse 11. These things said he, and after that he said unto him, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Lord, have mercy. Do you, have you ever had a sleeping moment and the Lord need to wake you up? Amen. Whoo, child. I had a couple of them. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for being the waker. Yes. So verse 12, then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in his sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Jesus had to tell the disciples that Lazarus was indeed dead, but temporary. Amen. Temporary. Then it says, And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. What? All right. <laughs> then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Four days, y'all. 
So then verse 18 says, Now Bethany was not unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. So I looked it up because I was like, how long is that? So 15 furlongs is equivalent to 1.88 miles, okay? Verse 19, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard words, she heard y'all, she heard that I am was coming there. I heard he was coming, y'all, he coming. I'm finna go meet him. I ain't finna stay, I'm finna go. He coming, y'all. And that Jesus was coming, went and met him, and Mary sat still in the house. Mary stayed put, y'all, okay? So then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if. Somebody say if. If, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Like, Lord, what took you so long? I know they told you. Like, what, what's going on, Lord? Why you tarry? We needed you now. But again, God's timing is perfect. Amen. Amen. All right. But I know that even now, listen to what she said, but I know even now, whatsoever thou would ask of God, God will give it thee. Talk about some faith, y'all. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. Oh, Lord, at the last day, talk about revival, rebirth, reborn, the resurrection. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. All right. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe? Amen. So she said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And when she had, set, had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, Girl, the master here, the master is coming. And he calling for you, better get up, stop what you're doing, and come on. You know, like you have to, when I read these stories, y'all, I put them in Miko's term. And I read them, and I be laughing. I be like, Lord, I bet, I bet Martha was like, girl, if you don't get your tail up and come on, the master is coming. Get up. Why are you still sitting here? Get up. Girl, move. You know, move. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself like that. Girl, get up and do something. Why are you still sitting here? The master is here. Amen. Like, get up and move. So it says, as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Mary did not tarry, she moved. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. It says, the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her. When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goeth to the grave to weep there. That's what they assumed, right? So then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Y'all, shorter verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. That shortest verse has so much power because these two words reveal deep sympathy that God feels towards the sorrow of his people. He wept, y'all. He wept. He felt the pain of his people like the feeling. He felt it. Amen. So then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should have died. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Somebody say, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time this man stank. My brother stank. He smelled. Like what in the world? For he had been dead for four days. So Martha wanted to remind Jesus of something that he already knew. He knew your brother was dead. He knew he was been dead for four days. And Jesus knew he stank. He knew those things. Jesus knew all these things. So then verse 40 says, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? 
Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I thank you, Lord, that you heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus prayed. We should pray too, y'all. Amen. Children, y'all at the age now, y'all can pray for yourself. You ain't got to wait for mama, daddy, grandma, granddaddy, auntie, uncle, great aunt, all that type of stuff. You open your mouth and you pray and talk to the Father. Amen. He hear you. Praise God. Woo. And then it says, and when he <laughs> thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, <laughs> come forth. My God, Jesus knew that he had to be specific, not specific, y'all. He had to be specific and say Lazarus' name because that's who he wanted. That's who he wanted to get up, amen? Because had he not said Lazarus, Lord, everybody, anyway, he said Lazarus specifically because that's who he wanted to get up, specifically. Specifically, he said Lazarus because he wanted Lazarus to get up. So it says, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. So now if Jesus can talk to the grave clothes, we can too. We can talk to the grave clothes, y'all. We can talk to these things. So then it says in verse 25, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did believed on him. You know, you have people that have to believe on what they see, and then you have people that just have faith and believe if you tell them or what they just believe, right? So my question to you today, what grave clothes are we walking around in? I mean, it's holding you down. <laughs> what grave clothes are we walking around in? Judgment, anger, gossip, greed, jealousy, hatred, 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 mess, yeah. drama, yeah. debt. Yeah. Oh, Y'all, what do you need to be loose from, church? Amen. So within yourself, or you can say it out loud if you feel like it. Say, loose me and let me go. Loose me and let me go. Say it like you mean it. Loose me and let me go. Because we walking around holding on to stuff and God like, I wish he'll just let it go. I wish he'll just drop it and just let it go. I'm working on it. Do you have faith? Do you believe that I am working on your behalf? I said I got it. The battle ain't yours. It belonged to me. Why you keep taking some back that you gave to me? Why? Trust my timing. I got you. I got you. I got you. That debt issue, I got you. Let it go. Loose me and let me go. Loose her and let her go. Loose Lucy, let her go. Loose Kanisha, let her go. Loose Brother Chick, let him go. Brother Nate, loose my daddy and let him go. Loose my mama and let her go. Loose Sister Evelyn, let her go. Hallelujah, Uncle Hot, loose him and let him go. Gladys, loose her and let her go. Y'all, loose, let him go. Our children, Lord, loose them and let them go. Our children, loose them and let them go. Let our children have long life. Let our children have long life. Ooh. Loose us and let us go. Loose us and let us go. Y'all, when you give something to God, don't take it back. Trust his time and leave it. He don't need your help. <laughs> he don't need your help, y'all. When I think about Sarah, how she was like, you know what? <laughs> The Lord said, you going to give us a child. I'm 90. You old. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. She laughed about it, y'all. She laughed. She laughed. And then she tried to help her husband. She tried to help God. Like, Lord, you taking too long. Let me go and give him my maid. <laughs> I'm going to have a son through my maid. And Jesus, I'm like, what in the world? God, like, look, I said I'm going to give you a child. If I say I'm going to give you something, it's going to come to pass. Y'all know that if God say something, his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish what he sent it to do, right? Amen. Y'all, what is it that you need to be loose from? Loose, loose it today, y'all. Do not leave church today. 
holding on to all this mess that God said we free from. Lord have mercy, loose, Lord, loose this church. Loose us and let us go. Let us be free, Lord. Loose us from the burden, the heaviness, Lord. Please, Lord. Lord, I thank you in advance that tonight we will have sweet sleep, all the stuff that's bothering us, health, worrying about our kids, worrying about our grandkids, our job, finances, all this type of stuff, God, that we're giving it to you today. We're giving it to you today where you can keep it fixed and do what you see fit, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. Now, faith is the substance of things, hopeful and evidence things are not seen. Y'all, we trust you, God, because we know that you are bigger than anything that we face, God. We trust you. Oh, Lord, I trust you, God, because I know you working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Oh, my God. All, yes, all the time you working. Even when I don't feel you sometimes, I know that you there according to my faith. Y'all, loose it and let it go. Loose it and let it go. Don't hold on to it. Be free. Don't y'all like y'all freedom? Because I don't know about y'all. Bondage ain't what I want. Amen. I want to live in my freedom that God promised me. Amen. Now, look, I done gave y'all what God gave me. Amen. And that's all I tend to do. I'm, all I'm giving you is what God gave me. Amen. Amen. Whew. I am done. But I will. I want to encourage the youth just for a second. Um, and the seasoned people too. Y'all, the enemy wants y'all to die. It's no secret, right? We have kids that's killing themselves and all this type of stuff. And suicide is like a touching, touching subject for me. But y'all, I want y'all to know that your life is important, okay? It's important. If you being bullied or anything, talk to somebody. Y'all have my number. I'm a light sleeper. If my phone rings, I'm going to answer, okay? If y'all have any issues or anything that you need to talk to somebody about, I'm available. If you don't want to talk to me, find somebody that you can talk to, but don't take your life. It's precious. It's precious, okay? Suicide is serious. There's a lot of kids that's thinking that's the only way out. It's not. It's not the only way out. If you feel like you want to hurt yourself or somebody, talk to somebody. Talk to me. Because I'm going to tell you, no, that ain't the way, okay? It's not the way. I speak long life on all of you, okay? And I love each and every one of you, okay? And what pastor say, ain't nothing you can do about it, okay? Ain't nothing you can do about it. Okay, so I am, is the baby asleep? Okay, he's asleep. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to ask my youth, the youth to come, for, come up. Hallelujah. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Have any youth today that has their gonna give us a little knowledge? Who's gonna come first? Right, Brother Jacob, Jacob. yes, y'all give him a hand. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Malcolm X. So uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Little was his name at first until he became a free slave and he changed his name to Malcolm X. He changed his name to Malcolm X because, or to symbolize his unknown African ancestral surname. Malcolm X was a man of many adversities, and one of them being that he was an orphan because of the fact that his dad died and his mom was hospitalized. Um, Malcolm X was an influential figure through our culture, and along with many other people, he's the reason that, or him, him and a lot of other people are the reason that we are the way we are today. And 
and that's it. Happy Black History Month.